Ale téma umelej inteligencie sa vám určite páči. Takže čo poviete, keby sme v nej zostali? Určite zostaneme. Ak ste dobre pozerali prezentáciu, tak ste videli, a ja sa na to opäť spýtam, v ktorom roku sa prvýkrát objavila umelá inteligencia. Bol tam len nejaký náznak toho roku, on ten rok je ešte presnejší v tej histórii. Kto, kto si pamätá ten rok? Prvýkrát umelá inteligencia. 1956, úplne najsprávnejšia odpoveď. A boli to veci ako John McCarthy, Marvin Minsky či Claude Shannon. A nakoniec McCarthy preslavil samotnú umelú inteligenciu tým, že vôbec vytvoril ten výraz. A dobre to rátam, to bolo len nejakých 11 rokov po, po vojne. Takže to, to bolo úplne úžasné, čo všetko sa vtedy dokázalo. No ale späť k tej umelej inteligencii. Videli ste, dnes sa tu bavíme o tom, že ešte to nie je úplne v takej fáze, v tej expertnej, takže ja to tak hovorím, že pre veľa expertov je AI zatiaľ iba IA. Takže trošku opačne, ale dá sa povedať, že sú tu tie LLM modely a na tých sa posúvame ďalej. No, Poďme sa pozrieť aj v nasledujúcich minútach, ako som hovoril o gumelej inteligencii a pozrime sa na to, ako ju skrotili vo firme Nexer Insight. Takže pripravení sú dvaja rečníci, pán Karl Tonset zo Švedska a Simon Johnson zo Španielska. Stage yours. Thank you. Thank you. Testing one, two, three. <laughs> Perfect. So welcome. I'm uh, an honor to be here in Slovakia and... Uh, to be able to present uh, me and Siemens' work the last uh, years. Um, to be briefly, introduction is that we are part of Nexa Group, a company called Nexa Insight. Of course, we are global, we are also local, but we are founded in Sweden. So me and Siemens is a part of a team of around 100 people that only focus on IoT, AI, and data platform. Simon. So I'm a data scientist at uh, this establishment here, and I work closely with Carl in these projects. So, uh, the last speaker talked about uh, a lot of AI co-pilots and so on, so we will try to explain the difference and what type of things we are doing as a consultant firm within the AI space. So, first, I want to set the stage. Do you like the picture of me in the presentation? What about It's, mine? It could be like in Rome, maybe, in Venice, or Slovakia. The problem is, It's totally fake. It's generated from the pictures from an old Facebook page with me drinking a Corona or driving a boat and so on. And like in one hour, you provide it with some samples, it can generate your business photos. So that's the stage that we have today with the, in the AI technology. Um, and I think that AI is not overvalued, it's undervalued. It will change our lives. And we will try to give some example what we can do in the AI space, for, for example, in the uh, public space, that we can do a lot of transformations with easy tools that are available today, that uh, are small products that generate a lot of benefits. So, as I said in the beginning, next to Insight focus on AI, IoT and data platform. So, when you try train this type of AI services, you must have control of your data. I, I saw this last presentation around Copilot, of course, Copilot, Microsoft Copilot is fantastic, But if you don't have control over your data and your data governance, you need to turn it off. It will find stuff that you shouldn't be able to read, uh, things from the management board and so on. So the first thing is to get control over your data, and then you have different consumers that consume your data within your company. So the difference for the, the use case that we show you later on is that Copilot for me, is an extension of me as an employee, for example. Uh, it will extend my, how I write things and the things that I have shown you in the last speaker. Uh, but I will try to see, uh, explain what type of things that you can build using, for example, cognitive services and Azure Open AI APIs, for example. Custom built AI solutions that are your own companies. So, I think this about 
17 or 19 different co-pilots from Microsoft right now. We will handle some of them. One, for example, is process mining within Power Platform co-pilot. So in the last years, we have done a lot of process mining projects within Nexer. For example, we have uh, within the, the, the coach, find the bottlenecks and so on uh, in Sweden. Also within uh, logistics and find bottlenecks where you transfer stuff around Sweden. But also in the elderly care. Simo. So in the elderly care example here, um, they had a huge issue with, they had elderly people that wanted food. However, that process, do you guys know what a process is? It's basically a, a set of steps. And that turned to, when they started mapping it out, turned to be very complicated. So what we did is we took the data of all these processes. First, they uh, registered that they wanted food, and then so on, I guess, with, uh, I think, around 20, with a variability of 20 extra steps. And uh, it turns out that it was way more complicated than they thought. So what we did is we started mapping it out, and then we used Power Automate to visualize it, see where we can make improvements, and then just improved it. So, of course, all these features are AI-generated, so mm. this lady doesn't exist. It's from mid-journey. But these type of projects took about one to three months to do. This one took four hours within process mining, when you help of process mining within Power Platform. So that's the difference, and it's just started. So, as I said, these projects that you will see right now are in production in Sweden. Um, and they are, the technology behind it is uh, cognitive service and open AI 3.5, 4.0, 4.0. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, that's awesome. uh, the API that you can try uh, on the open AI webpage, but we connect it and make it enterprise ready. So, for example, I was Sweden. I was born Christian. Right now, I'm together with my wife, that is a Buddhist. So, we have different opinions. So, if you take a custom GPT, this is just a brief example so you to understand the, pre the products that will come later on. If you train two different custom GPTs, one according to Christianity, what happens after death, the purpose of life and so on, and you take the same thing from the Buddh Buddhism, and you lock it in, it will only answer according to the religion. And you can train it by yourself. It took me about one hour each to train an AI bot for Christianity, for example. So you train it on the documents, and you train it how to answer. So if you ask the same questions to these two type of bots, what happens after life, it will answer differently. And that's the same thing that we do when we create these type of projects. So we started one and a half a year ago in a small city on the Swedish west coast called Udvalla. It's a small old town, pretty boring, uh, a lot of layoffs. But they are right now, according to Microsoft, the number one in Europe regarding digitalization. Uh, and that's very fun to work with them. So we started again within the elder care, the elder sector. Uh, and we created an enterprise ready bot with OpenAI 3.5 and 4.0. How do you treat a womb? And so on. And the documents are in an old, boring SharePoint, connected with like hundreds of extra PDFs. So the questions would be, for example, how do I order a wheelchair according to the Vala's policies? How do I treat a COVID womb? And so on. And if you track the time, the, the service people mostly go down to the office and search on the SharePoint and then went back again. So we're talking about three to four hours a day just searching for stuff. Um, and we, we produce, produced uh, the AI bot, put it out into an app, so all the service people can just search for information right now. Of course, in different languages and so on. And that was just the start. So that inspired the whole city, what can we do with AI? So the same bot framework that we built for them also supports the businesses in the city. How to apply for a building permit, how to apply for 
uh, if you need to start a business and so on. And Simon, hmm. what's the the brain behind this. How do we build this? Uh, so, as the presenter said before, I think he mentioned LLMs, right? And that's basically chat GPT. So, what we do is they have a thing called a context window, and we just fit in as many relevant documents to that. So, the previous presentation was right on the money because he did a similar thing. He uploaded documents, and then uh, the AI just uh, read through them and then summarized. That's basically how it goes. However, the, the search is a bit more complicated because yeah, Swedish documents and a whole bunch of them, right? Uh, <clears throat> so what we did is we created a web portal and then <clears throat> we created a web portal and then we had a data uh, lake as we saw before. And then through the data lake, we just search all the documents. Uh, and then with the documents, we just feed them into the AI. And then we get this nice result here where the elderly care professionals can just search, okay, this happened, what do we do about it, according to the book. So they don't have to search through all the documents themselves or know about them, which increases the efficiency of these employees a lot. And the same with uh, alcohol permit, uh, how to search for that or how to apply for that. We sped up the process tremendously. The same with getting a big law in English. Building permit. Building permit. That could take months. We, I think we set a record as well with that one. Yeah, I think we went from 11 months to about uh, four minutes. Uh, so that's, that's, good. that's a good improvement, I would say. Yeah, and that, that's just a start. We have a lot of cases ongoing, and they are small products, but the scale inside the city. So one, for example, is uh, live. You, you transcribe live your voice instead of a post-it. Uh, instead of a post-it, and then you transcribe it in a, with the OpenAI chat GPT, and then store it on a data platform. And then you, with the help of NLP, na, uh, language processing, you can see the type of trends in the data. For example, now the COVID is back during Mars, for example, regarding to all the post-it, digital post-its uh, you have, for example. But that's not the only thing you do. One thing is very important is that uh, when you treat elderly, it's about downfall in your home. It's something called downfall index. So, for example, I live in, in my own apartment, but, uh, but I'm treated by the elderly care in the city. Uh, and if you have played Xbox like 10 years ago, you know about LIDAR. LIDAR is when you dance in front of the Xbox. That's the same technology. So, you just have a, this type of uh, point cloud around you. And you can see if Carl lays down on the floor and has passed out, or if I'm starting to wobbling because I'm going to fall. But if you combine these type of data sources, compute the vision live with leader, digital post-it uh, post-its, and for example, the intake of uh, vitamin D. That's something that you can map and map it according to the hospital the downfall index, the risk of falling in your home. That's very costly and also very painful. So it's just one more example of what we are doing in Udvala. But it's not only elder care, it's also about schools. I'm not afraid of AI in schools. I'm happy about it. I have two children, my own, nine and seven years old, and I use it to teach them with help of AI. Um, so, Simon, this product that you did for Lexan in north of Sweden. So imagine you're, you're a parent of a kid and they have maybe fallen behind in the curriculum or they have some neurodegenerative disease or whatever. Then you kind of need special help to get them up to speed or get them special help to understand their issue combined with getting the help to make them learn as efficient in their own way. So what we did is we just took the GPT-40 and then... And we the GPT-40? Yeah. Is that, what's that? It's the omni-channel, yeah. so it takes video, <laughs> audio, whatever. Uh, omni, everything. And um, we, we fed that the teacher's handbook for the different ages of the kids. So for example, if I have a kid that can do addition or something, uh, what we do is we first scan the homework assignment and then 
uh, we feed it the documents from the first year uh, curriculum or the first year teacher's handbook. And then the kid will talk to it in Swedish, just voice, and say, okay, I need to do this, scan the assignment, and then uh, it's instructed to be very pedagogical as well. So it takes the steps that maybe we don't have the patient to do, and then breaks down the problems, and then the, the kid can see in a different way that maybe I'm not a teacher, so I don't know how hard it is, right? But I don't think I would be good to teach addition because I did a lot of math. And this robot here has all the patients in the world as well. So we get them up to speed, we track the results. Yeah. So that's one example of what you can do with this fantastic new technology uh, according to your school plan. But it's not only in, in the public space we are working. Uh, this is a fantastic product, it's a big travel company uh, based in Sweden. Uh, and they have their headquarters for the support, I think it's in Malta or, or Gran Canaria or something. There are about 1,000 people that support you during your trip. Where is the, the, the connecting bus? Where is the special boat party I would like to attend to? 1,000 people working in four different languages. And they have problem to find skilled people that want to move to Malta to work. And when they move there, they're like parting for one year and then go back. So, of course, they called us, and Simon went out as a superhero to help them. So it's kind of the same case as Uddevalla. We have a lot of questions, and then the response time is quite slow. So what we did is we fed it all the previous questions it had been fed, and then we add in some extra data. And now it can answer in the same way as Uddevalla does. Checks the data store, checks the a question, and then connects the two, and then writes a good answer to that. And we turn the uh, answer time to, there is still an agent involved, of course, but we turn the answer time to several hours down to minutes, which is also efficient. So that's just one example of many. And my hometown, Gothenburg in Sweden, uh, West Traffic, the public transport company in the whole western part of, of Sweden, they have, of course they have the standard app, I want to travel from X to Z, X, and I can get this direction and time. But that's just an old database, it isn't that smart. And a uh, so add on to that app, they have about 100 people outsourced, not in Sweden, they work in Dakar and uh, different types of world that learn Swedish, they have never been to Gothenburg, to answer questions. Uh, how do I go to Liseberg, for example? So, of course, the superhero, Simon, went to Gothenburg again, and we trained an AI to support this personnel in the beginning, but the plan is to scale out to 1.3 million citizens. And the old app is no, rather static, not dumb, but static, but we want to add more data sources, like it's a concert going on, or it's something happening with, with the trains and the ferries that are also that, that can, can understand that it's better to take this way, not that standard way. Or what do you say, Simon? So same as Uddevalla and Leksand. Uh, we just want to feed it the right amount of data, and data quality is everything, so if, just, uh, if you guys are planning on it, collecting data on a governmental level, make it super good and be thorough in the beginning. Because the case here was that they had very well curated data. Uh, they had support uh, professionals that just filled in the current documents, and then uh, down to a OCD level almost of uh, clarity, which made the entire search way easier to, one, provide, and then to provide answers to the customers. And it's the same case here. We feed it data, they ask a question, we feed it data, and then uh, we ask the AI or the LLM to summarize it for us or make it into a, an answer as real as a human uh, can provide. And then just tag along more multiple sources, and they can see the documents. Where we, did we retrieve this? Where can I read more about this, etc.? Yeah, so this, just to be clear, this is not Carl's super AI services that I sell to you. This is customer uh, services 
custom tools that you can build your own stuff with standard tools. So, and this is pretty small projects, a few hundred hours in the beginning, and then maybe a thousand hours when you scale. So, because everything is, is always ready just to, work, just to start using it. You can also, just to give you more examples around uh, generative AI, is that uh, within HR, we have uh, two examples in Sweden right now. Uh, one from the, the taxi business. When you, when you have a big taxi, old, not Uber, an old taxi business, uh, you employ about 1,000 people a week uh, in the whole Sweden. And uh, sometimes you get a CV with a name and a picture on a cat. But that guy can still drive a good cab, but the CV doesn't say that. Uh, and we also have examples regarding voluntary work for, for, for young people that want to, to work with, with uh, volunteer work, but they don't have a CV because they are 14 years old. So, Simon, what did you do in that case? Uh, several things. We can help them write CVs. They just input their basic information into ChatGPT. We format it. All good. Um, we can have questionnaires to figure out, okay, what are you good at? How well do you drive? Etc. And then we generate this, make it easier to read, and also searchable for the AR professional, which reduces their time of searching through this pile of less than optimal CVs. Uh, into just a search away. Yeah, so that's, that's so many examples, but we don't have so much time. That's why you com compact it right now. Mm. So, find gold in your own data with AI. That's fantastic. Also, so, now a question. What do you think this is? I, don't, I guess that no one has a clue. This is a heat map over Stockholm. So, if you have been to Stockholm, over here is Arlanda in the airport. And this is all the taxi um, rides since 10 years ago. Because in Sweden, we like to store things in our basement. But this is gold for the taxi business, because now you know where the gold are. Where should I be? In which time should I be somewhere to find business? So I don't sit in idle, for example. It's not Uber, it's a traditional taxi business. Of course, you can combine it with new data. It's a concept going on and so on, but you must also understand where is the business located during a seller weekend, for example, or uh, some type of restaurant areas. So the thing is in this project is to have a knowledge transfer. If Simon is, is new in the taxi business in Stockholm, he doesn't find it in, uh, in, on the map. He doesn't know where to go. I can transfer my knowledge, because I have driven taxi for 50 years, and give it to him on the first day. Where should I be? And the transfer is easy. We just check the taxi data. And of Carl's records, we just see where did he stand at which time. And then we can kind of predict, OK, where is the uh, customer demand going to be? And then we split it into several regions here. You can see that it's a little bit squares. And uh, we see that, uh, for, for me, when driving my first day, maybe I should stand in one of the red zones, because that's a lot of traffic. And also, there is a tendency for a lot of seasoned taxi drivers to stand in the same place, because they know exactly where it's going to be. However, that causes congestion as well, so it's a bit about teaching them how to rethink their intuition, I guess. And what we did is, both for me and for Carl, when we drive the taxi, uh, we send out a location. You should stand here, I should stand here. And in such a way, we can feed the demand of the map, so to say, and uh, reduce cancellations as well, uh, because a lot of the issues is that they order a taxi, it takes too long to come because everybody's standing at Arlanda, for example, and uh, suboptimal as well, uh, both for the customer and the driver. Um, so what we did is we fed this with a lot of data, um, seasonality, what happened yesterday, when is it salary day, uh, which time of the year do people like to go out in winter, and we created this prediction here, which is uh, close to accurate, and we can see that November 25th, which is salary day in Sweden, a lot of people want to ride taxis, and then we can provision the amount of uh, taxi drivers needed, and uh, roughly estimate where they should be standing as well and so, also the routing. 
So the last minutes, I want to scare you off a little bit what's happening in, in the AI space during 2024. I hope, because it scares me a little bit. So, uh, we were talking about uh, empowering children in school, of course. But after this session, and you sit out in a lounge and you generate an AI, fantastic AI uh, post uh, on ChatGPT, and then you post it on LinkedIn directly. The AI detector in LinkedIn will, will detect that it's the AI generated post. I will not show it to uh, anyone, mostly. So, but if you want to cheat that, you generate uh, a post in, on ChatGPT, and you post it on this type of tool on detectable.ai. It will remove mostly of the things that an AI detects. It will automatically check for uh, AI detect services. In the real time, it takes about 15 seconds. Um, and we generate a new post that's almost the same that you can copy paste into LinkedIn or everywhere. And you will, can also type of propose more human, you know, writing so on. So you can cheat the AI detectors, for example. That's one thing. So we are, we, we will cheat on AI. You can stop it right now. Some other things that would be interesting with the sun works. This is Sora. Maybe some of you have seen it before. Uh, I don't think it will be released before the election in the US. This is just prompting to generate this type of, of movies. So that will be in your hand in the coming months, maybe after November in the US, because this is really scary and it will change our lives. I've tested out myself and it's, it's fantastic, these type of things that you can create just by a prompt. But more things that are scary. Engage in full conversations, understand their surroundings, plan ahead, and execute complex tasks. Engage in full conversations, understand their surroundings, plan ahead. So we don't have the time for the whole movie. But this is a, a robot that you put the brain of OpenAI 4.0 into the brain. So if you look at this clip on YouTube, for example, it will do the dishes, happy about it. And then Sima comes up with, a, with some trash and throws on it. In that trash, it's a red apple. And he doesn't know anything, he's just doing the dishes, but Sima says that, I'm hungry, can you give me something to eat? And the only thing that they can eat is the red apple, and, and it stops the dishes and gives the apple to Sima. To Sima. That's how smart it is during 2024. This is just the beginning. So, as I mentioned, it's election year going on. So, this is very scary. This is totally deep fake right now. And this is, me and Simon can do it without any knowledge on a Friday evening to generate these type of things that are totally fake. So, the, tool, the tools are here, the AI are here. Fantastic. So, to wrap up, this is an AI-generated picture of my daughter in the future, I guess. And what do you think about Sigmund? My, my guess is that I'm trying to get mid-journey to like, generate my thoughts, but I'm thinking about some kind of AI bots, agents that are like surrounding her in her daily life, in her school, in her coming job? What's your guess? Uh, if I can be optimistic a little bit. So let's say you want to sit and work. You don't want to go and grab a drink. Uh, maybe it can be fetched for you with some automatic agent. I mean, it's just in six years, so maybe I'm a little bit too optimistic. But uh, your task can be generated automatically as well because it knows the process from start to finish to implement such a task. And uh, task support as well. You might need this knowledge, so maybe it prepares that for you, et cetera, et cetera. So hyper-efficient working is a little bit my hope as a programmer, because uh, less of the boring stuff and more of the fun stuff would be nice. What do you think? I think the same, and uh, I'm looking forward for the future, especially within the schools, elder care, in the, in the e-health type of stuff. 
It's fantastic, but of course, we will read the books in the 10 years, and we have also done some bad things, of course. So, but it's a fantastic time to live in that our children will read about in the future. I'm pretty sure. So, that's pretty awesome. I think we have the time as well, mostly. We haven't thrown us out yet. Questions? No, we have one minute more. So, will you take the questions from the audience or? Uh, take them yeah. Tak máme aj nejaké otázky. Ste sa chceli spýtať pánov? Yeah. How well is the process of training automated? Are you as a company heavily involved in training AI models or customer ca can train it mostly by themselves? Well, this is a tricky one, depends on the application. For example, using the open AI uh, agents, etc. Uh, they don't need to be retrained. You can retrain them, but our use for them is just to read text, summarize them, and then have the whole search flow. But for example, with Cab Online, that we want to train, and that's called machine learning operations, right? We feed the data new, we test it continually, and every time we make a change, we test it heavily, and then it's uh, you know in a cycle. So new data comes in, how well does it fit? And it's retrained to fit the data optimally or as optimal as possible. Yeah, and next question is uh, about cooperation with the uh, military. Yeah, I, I actually not allowed to answer that. <laughs> but we have, of course, business in the US. Could, could you describe the project with the military? <laughs> <laughs> Any project uh, with military? Uh, yeah, it's secret. That could be, uh, of course, in, uh, in uh, computer vision, of course, but that's not the type of product I mentioned right now, but uh, build custom detection systems, uh, that could be it, it for example. Uh, but of course, we are in a military producing com com country as Sweden, <laughs> but uh, I, I can't comment anything about military stuff. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.